Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Rastogi. I'm a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I'm creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, today in this particular lecture, we will going to discuss about frequency of spread spectrum systems. So these are the outlines. We'll start up with the introduction. Then we will discuss what is FHSS system, how basically it works, which will be followed by the principle behind FHSS system. Then we will discuss FHSS transmitter followed by a receiver. Then we will going to discuss two variants of FHSS systems. That is your slow hopping frequency of spread spectrum system and fast hopping frequency of spread spectrum systems. They are the classification which is based over dwell time. So we will discuss on that what is dwell time and how we are going to define what is fast hopping uh, frequency of spread spectrum systems and what are slow hop term, uh, frequency of spread spectrum systems. Then uh, we will be going to discuss several advantages as well as the disadvantages of the frequency of spread spectrum systems. And finally, we are going to conclude by discussing some of the applications of FHSS systems. Spread spectrum modulation spreads the spectrum of transmitted signal into the wider range makes the signal very robust to unintentional interference or jamming. So this is we have already understood in our previous lectures that in spread spectrum modulation schemes, what we are actually going to do is we will going to spread the spectrum of the transmitted signal so that they will become very robust to the jamming. So the types of spread spectrum modulations are frequency of spread spectrum system. In FHSS system, transmitted signal keeps randomly changing its carrier frequency in wideband. So basically in frequency of spread spectrum system, the transmitted signal keeps randomly changing its carrier frequency in the wide range. So what is actually happening in this particular scenario is the central carrier frequency will keep changing on. It will not fixed just like as in our traditional narrowband communication system. And second variant is your uh, direct sequence spread spectrum systems. In DSS transmitted signal is represented by the wideband code. We actually expand our uh, narrowband signal with the help of PNC sequence codes that we had already discussed. So this code transforms narrowband data into the noise-like signal or we could say that noise-like wideband data. So in both types of spread spectrum techniques, we basically require a noise-like code which is used to enhance or increase the bandwidth of our signal. So basically in both the variants of uh, spread spectrum communication system, somehow we are utilizing or using a PN random sequence generator with the help of that random sequence, we are actually trying to enhance or increase our transmitted signal spectrum. So how we will going to enhance or increase the spectrum of our signal in direct sequence spread spectrum system, we had already seen in our earlier lectures. So now we will try to focus that how with the help of PN sequence generation, we will going to enhance or expand the transmitted signal bandwidth in FHSS system. So in our last lecture, we have discussed about DSS system where we find out that there is a limitation of processing gain in DSS system as we cannot increase the value of n beyond the certain limit. So where n is the number of bits in the chipping code, so we cannot increase the value of n that is number of chipping bits that lie in a bit duration due to certain pulse width limitation. So this limitation restricts the performance of the direct sequence spread spectrum systems. Since we know that the processing gain is nothing but it is the ratio of expanded signal bandwidth divided by the signal bandwidth without expansion and the bandwidth of the expanded signal is dependent upon the value of n that is number of bits in the chipping sequence. So if we cannot enhance or increase the value of n beyond certain limits, then obviously it will going to restrict or limit the processing gain in my DSS system. So in this particular lecture, we will going to discuss about frequency hot spread spectrum system which provides the better processing gain. So what is frequency hopping spread spectrum system and how it actually functions. So it is the spread spectrum technique where center frequencies get changed periodically according to the PN sequence. So here what important point I'm going to make is here the central carrier frequency is not fixed. It is keep on changing periodically and at what instant which frequency it will going to take or which carrier frequency it will going to opt in order to transmit its signal that is totally dependent upon PN sequence which is random. So for modulation purpose we could use coherent or non-coherent any type of modulation techniques. 
such as our MFSK, that is your multi frequency shifting as well as binary phase shifting, etc. So, any sort of modulation technique would have been exploited in our FHSS system. So, signal is broadcast over seemingly random series of frequencies. This is what we had already mentioned that here central carrier frequency is not fixed, it is keep on changing. So, basically, we will going to broadcast our signal over random series of frequencies. So, receiver hops between frequencies in sync with the transmitter. So, transmitter and receiver, both of them are in complete sync so that they should know at what instant of signal transmission which carrier frequency would have been used for transmission. So, eavesdropper, if somehow gets the access to the user data, can only hear an intelligent blips. So, suppose in this particular scenario where the central carrier frequency is keep on changing if any eavesdropper or unintended user somehow gets some information about the central carrier frequency it is not getting the complete information it is only getting an unintelligent smaller portion or unintelligent blip of the signal or we could say that small portion of the input signal which is not sufficient enough to find out the complete information so jamming on one frequency affects only a few bits corresponding to that frequency only. So in jamming also, if some user try to jam certain frequency band, so it will only going to jam that much amount of signal which is centered around the jamming frequency. So it will not going to affect the complete amount of information. It could only affect a only smaller portion of our transmitted signal, whereas rest of the signal can be easily transported. So this particular figure is showing the principle of FHSS system. So on the y-axis we will be having several frequencies and on the x-axis we will be having time. So what we are actually doing is we have actually divided our this complete wideband spectrum into eight parts one, two, three up to eight. Then then what we'll be going to do in our FHSS system is at initial stage our signal is transmitted with the help of this central carrier frequency F5. Then after some time it will going to take another central carrier frequency which is equivalent to your F1. Then after another certain time interval it will going to take another central carrier frequency that is analogous to your F4. And then after some time it will going to take the central carrier frequency F8 and so on so what we or actually wanted to mention at this particular point is the central carrier frequency is not fixed it is keep on changing first we are using f5 then f1 then f4 then and so on in our fhs system our central carrier frequency will not going to fixed as in our traditional communication system it will keep on changing as we have already seen that at certain moment it is your f5 then after some time it will going to take central carrier frequency as f1 then after some time it will going to take the central carrier frequency f4 so what i wanted to mention at this particular point is our complete signal is being distributed over this entire wideband spectrum it is not confined or fixed to over a certain frequency band that is why we are saying that our signal bandwidth has been expanded since it is containing the complete range of frequencies so this is how we will saying that our signal bandwidth has been expanded. So this is the basic principle of our FHSS system. So now in this particular side, let us discuss a comparison between frequency division multiplexing and frequency of spread spectrum system. So what we are actually doing in our traditional FDM system is we are actually dividing our complete frequency spectrum band into sub bands and then we will assigning a particular sub band to an individual user suppose in this particular example we have divided our complete frequency spectrum into four sub bands and we are assigning to these frequencies f1 f2 f3 and f4 analogous to different users and users are using only those sub bands to transmit their own information so any two users will not going to use the another users frequency band which will going to cause certain amount of interference each and every individual user is bound to transmit in its own sub band and that frequency band is available to that particular user for the whole time so in contrast with your fdm what we are actually doing in our fhs system is here also we are dividing the complete frequency spectrum band but here we are not restricting that any user 
will going to only use a single frequency band obviously it can use any sort of frequency band but provided it should not produce any sort of interference to the transmission of other users as we can see in this particular scenario that at this particular moment suppose user 1 is using this f1 frequency user 2 is using this f2 frequency user 3 is using this f3 frequency and user 4 is using this f4 frequency so after some time user 1 will going to use the user 4's frequency and user 4 will going to user 3rd's frequency so obviously this can be possible if we can keep on changing the carrier frequencies and this is what we are actually doing in our frequency of spread spectrum system so now from this particular example we could understand that each and every user's data would have been present in all of the frequency bands so this is how we could say that in contrast with our traditional fdm system where the single user channel bandwidth is only confined in one sub bands in our fhs system single users data would have been distributed over the entire frequency band and this is how we are saying that the transmitted bandwidth of our signal in fhs system has been expanded so now we're going to discuss frequency of spread spectrum transmitter so initially we'll be having data bit which is denoted by our dt which will going to pass through the frequency modulator or bpsk whose another input is uh, the carrier signal that is your a cos 2 pi fct then this modulated signal will get passed to the product multiplier which is also being called as frequency hop spreader whose another input is the carrier frequency ct which is the outcome of your frequency synthesizer circuitry so what frequency synthesizer circuitry is it is a basically electronic circuitry which can be able to generate the different frequency signals so this frequency synthesizer circuitry is taking the input from the channel table and what basically the channel table is channel table is having several bit sequences as the index and for every index will be it, it is having a table of different frequency values just like for 000 it is having 200 kilohertz 001 it is having uh, 300 kilohertz so for different index value it is containing different frequency values your f1 f2 f3 up to f8 so channel table is getting the input from our pseudo noise bit sequence what is pseudo noise bit sequence generator we had already discussed it is basically generating random bit sequences so here we are assuming that it is actually generating three bit output sequence which is random so it is basically randomly generated three bit sequences and depending upon the output of our pn random bit sequence it is basically selecting any frequency bands from its channel and that selected frequency information would have been passed to the frequency synthesizer circuitry which will going to generate the central carrier frequency depending upon the information it is getting from the channel table so what our fh spreader is actually doing is it is providing certain product multiplication with the sdt signal and ct signal and then this modulated signal or we could say that the spreaded signal or expanded bandwidth signal will get passed through the band pass filter which will going to take the sum frequencies and that spread spectrum signal st will get passed to the channel so here is the explanation about fhss transmitter so initially the binary data are fed into the modulator using the fsk your frequency shift scheme or binary phase shift scheme so we could use any one of them so the resulting signal sdt is centered on some carrier frequency so obviously dt is passed to the product multiplier whose another central carrier frequency is a cos of omega ct so that signal will get centered around that carrier frequency which is your modulated signal so a pseudo random number serves as an index into the table of frequencies this is what we are mentioning in our last slide that pseudo random number generator serves as the index so it is basically providing some index value and for each and every index value several set of frequencies would have been assigned in our channel table so depending upon the input of that index value our frequency synthesizer circuitry will going to select the actual carrier frequency and it will generate the carrier frequency ct which will be keep on changing depending upon the input from the pn sequence generator so each k bit of pn source is specifies one of the 2k carrier frequencies so obviously if we are uh, assuming that our pn sequence is of k bit 
then the pn source specifies one of the 2 to the power k carrier frequencies so in our last example what we have taken the value of k is 3 so the different value that would have been selected with the use of 3 bits that will be equal to 2 to the power 3 that is 8 so 8 different values would have been selected or we could say that we can have 8 different values of carrier frequencies and at a particular time it will going to select only one carrier frequency so at each successive interval a new carrier frequency is selected this is what i have explained so the frequencies inside that generate a constant frequency tone whose frequency hops among a set of 2 to the power k frequencies with the hopping pattern determined by the k bits from the pn sequence so obviously the frequencies incisor will going to generate one of the carrier frequency at certain duration of time and when another bit sequence would have been generated by the pn random sequence generator it will going to switch over to the next carrier frequency so the hopping pattern that is from one central carrier frequency to another central carrier frequency which pattern it will going to take that would have been determined by the pn random sequence generator which is random so this is known as the spreading or chipping signal ct of the fhss signal so this alternately varying carrier frequency signal would have been called as your chipping si signal that is your ct or fhss so this, this signal is again modulated to produce the new signal with the same shape but now centered on the central carrier frequency so obviously if the value of ct would have been changed continuously it will going to generate the signal which is centered at the central carrier frequency ct at that particular moment so bandpass filter is used to block the difference frequency and pass the sum frequency yielding the final fhs signal your st so obviously it will going to contain two sort of frequency component as we had already discussed in our modulation process that it will going to generate two frequency component one is some frequency and another one is the difference frequency so where both the frequencies will going to have the same amount of signal so we are selecting here the plus or some frequency so now we're going to discuss one example of frequency hopping so this particular plot is showing between frequency and the energy so again we have divided our complete frequency spectrum into eight parts from f0 to f7 as we had already discussed in our last example where we have divided our complete spectrum into eight parts so since we have started with f f0 or f0 so here also we have divided them into eight parts so last part is our f7 so these sub channels f0 f1 f3 f4 these are certain equally spaced frequency subbands and this is actually showing the output of our pn random sequence generator suppose initially it is generating 101 then in the second cycle it is generating 111 then in the third cycle it is generating 001 so depending upon that value it will going to select the central carrier frequency so just an example let us consider that the decimal value of 101 is equivalent to 5 and 111 is equivalent to 7 and so on the last 100 is equivalent to decimal value 4 so depending upon the outcome it will going to select the central carrier frequency so here we could say that at for the initial transmission of our signal we are using this f5 carrier frequency then we will going to switch over to our f7 carrier frequency then after some time we will going to again switch over our central carrier frequency to f1 then f0 then f2 and so on so on this right side figure we are trying to show this particular sequence that how we will going to generate frequency hop signal so initially when we have to initiate our transmission our central carrier frequency would have been selected as f5 then after some time the next central frequency that we will going to select is our f7 then in the third cycle we will going to select f1 then in the fourth cycle we will going to select f0 and so on so this is how our fhss signal would have been generated whose central carrier frequency is keep on changing that at certain moment it initially it is your f5 then f7 and then f1 so that sequence that from f5 to f7 then f7 to f1 it is completely random in nature which is governed by your 
the outcome of your pn random sequence generator so this is how the single user data would have been distributed in the entire frequency spectrum or we could say that we have generated a wide band signal from the narrow band signal so this is the example of our frequency hopping so now we're going to discuss frequency of spread spectrum receiver so the input to the receiver is the spread spectrum signal st that is passed to the fhss d spreader since at the transmitting side we will be having frequency of spreader so at the receiving side we will be having fh d spreader the second input to the fh d spreader is again the ct which is the same carrier frequency as we have used at the transmitting side and this ct would have been in complete sync with the transmitter side ct so this ct signal would have been generated with the help of frequency synthesizer circuitry which will going to take input from the pseudo random noise bit sequence generate so what i wanted to point out at this particular moment is this ct and ct that we have generated at the transmitting side they should be in complete sync so that the receiver should know that at which particular instant which frequency it must have to generate in order to obtain the information signal so the output of FHD spreader signal would have been passed through the band pass filter which will going to generate our SDT signal which will further pass through the demodulator circuitry depending upon whichever type of modulator mechanism we have applied at the transmitting side that is whether FSK or BPSK we must have to pass our signal SDT through the respective demodulator whose second input is the carrier frequency a cos of 2 pi FCT so it will going to generate our binary data sequence dt so this is the explanation what we have discussed so far the spread spectrum signal is demodulated using the same sequence of pn derived frequencies and then demodulated to produce the output data this is what i have discussed that there should be a complete sync between the transmitter and the receiver side pn sequence so that they could operate over the same frequency bands or same chipping sequence ct at the receiver a signal of the form st defined on the previous slide will be received then this is multiplied by the replica of the spread in signal to yield the product signal so this is actually being showing the operation of our fhd spreader so one input to our fhd spreader is the actual signal st which will get multiplied with the ct it is basically maintaining the same carrier frequency information as we have at the transmitting side the output of our fhd spreader or frequency of d spreader will be the product of our signal st with the c which will again get passed through the band pass filter so band pass filter is used to block the sum frequency and pass the difference frequency which is then demodulated and recover the binary data so this is how our frequency hop spread spectrum receiver will functions and retrace the same data bits dt as we have generated at the transmitting side so now we will going to discuss the two variants of frequency hop spread spectrum system that is slow hop frequency hop spread spectrum system and fast hopping frequency hop spread spectrum system so before we will going to discuss what are they let us discuss few basic terms in order to understand the fast hopping frequency of spread spectrum system and slow hopping frequency hopping spread spectrum system hop time what is hop time so it is the small amount of time during the frequency change in which no transmission takes place so as we had already discussed in our example our central carrier frequency will keep on changing that is for certain moment of time it is transmitting central carrier frequency f1 then after some time it will going to transmit over another central carrier frequency f5 so hop time is the small time during the frequency change from f1 to f5 and please keep in mind ki here no signal transmission will going to take place it would have been considered as the switching time from one central carrier frequency to another central carrier frequency then what is dwell time so it is the time spent on a particular channel with the carrier frequency so we could also say that it is the time duration over which signal is transmitted over single central carrier frequency so if i would have to explain it with the help of certain figure 
then let us say at initial time interval central carrier frequency f1 is selected and user is transmitting its information using that central carrier frequency f1 then after certain time it will going to move on over next central carrier frequency let us say it is equivalent to or analogous to your f5 so the time gap in which no signal is actually being passing this time lag is actually called as your hopping time which would have been represented by your th so hop time is the amount of time during which frequency changes and no transmission actually have been take place so this is your hopping time and what do you mean by dwell time it is that time duration in which signal is only using a single carrier frequency that is equivalent to f1 or we could say that f5 so this dwell time is represented as td and this is the actual duration so on the basis of dwell time we can talk about two variants of fhss so i mean if the value of td is greater than with duration tb or the value of dwell time td is less than the value of tb so first variant is slow fhss so what basically slow fhss is it means many of the symbols would have been passed or many of the data bits would have been passed on the same carrier frequency that means hopping or changing among the central carrier frequency is quite low so this would have been called as your slow fhss so that is your dwell time is greater than your bit duration tb so it means many of the bit would have been passed through the same carrier frequency or hopping rate is quite slow so the transmitter remains in one frequency band during the transmission of multiple bits this is what i wanted to explain with the help of this relationship so the example of low frequency of spread spectrum system is our gsm the exact value of dwell time in gsm is 4.2 milliseconds so in slow frequency hop spread spectrum system multiple bits would have been passed using the same carrier frequency whereas in the fast hopping frequency of spread spectrum system is it is basically just the inverse case of your slow hop frequency hopping spread spectrum system that is here in this particular case your dwell time td is very much less than tb it means for transmitting a single bit or symbols multiple times carrier frequencies would have been changed so the transmitter hops in many frequency bands during the transmission of single bit this is what i have tried to explain you so the example of fast hopping frequency of spread spectrum system is bluetooth where the dwell time is 1600 hops per second it means in a single second 1600 times your carrier frequency will get changed so this figure is actually showing the example of our slow hop frequency of spread spectrum system and fast hop spread spectrum system so in this upper portion of our figure it is actually reflecting the user data so user data is your 0 1 0 1 1 uh, actually high value of pulse is representing 1 and low value of pulse is representing 0 so this is your user data and the bit duration is represented by this value tb so please keep in mind this is just to show the example of your fast hop frequency of spread spectrum system and slow hopping frequency of spread spectrum system this is not the standard one so let us assume that in a single dwell time this td we are transmitting three bits that is 0 1 and 0 so and after that this dwell time we will again going to switch over to next central carrier frequency so during this dwell time td we are actually passing three bits amount of information or we could say that we are actually passing this three bit amount of information using same central carrier frequency so this is the example of your slow hopping frequency of set spectrum system that is we are passing three bits per hop or we could say that we are passing three bit amount of information over the single central carrier frequency whereas in the sec second figure what it is actually showing is here this td dual time td is quite lower so in figure it is also being clear that td is very much lower in comparison to your tb so in order to pass this single bit amount of information our central carrier frequency 
will get changed three times that is for certain duration of time the central carrier frequency is f1 then for certain duration of time it is your f3 and for certain duration of time it is your f2 so central carrier frequency will get changed three times in order to transmit single bit information that is your tb so we could also say that it is our fast hopping or we could say that our central carrier frequency is changing very fast so in this particular example we are actually changing the central carrier frequency three times in order to transmit one bit information so this is actually showing the fast hopping frequency of the spread spectrum system so now the advantages of fhss system so synchronization is not greatly dependent upon the distance as it is the case for our direct sequence spread spectrum system where we have seen that if the distance between the transmitter and receiver is much more the synchronization will get affected due to the multipath propagation effect then the serial search system with fhss needs shorter time for acquisition so here the acquisition time is quite lower obviously in comparison to our direct sequence spread spectrum system we can acquire the frequency information much faster and the third advantage is the processing gain of gp is higher than the dsss system so in dss system we have limitation over the chipping duration we cannot exceed the value of gp or processing gain greater than n where the capital n is the number of bits in the chipping sequence but in the FHS system, we can increase or enhance the value of processing gain considerably higher. So now the disadvantages of FHS systems are the bandwidth of FHS system is too large. As I had already mentioned that we could enhance or increase the value of processing gain. So the bandwidth of FHS system is too large. And the second disadvantage of FHS system are complex and expensive digital frequency synthesizers are required to be used since synthesizer are the major functional blocks of your FHSS systems. So obviously from hardware point of view, we are requiring such sort of synthesizers which could generate a variety of central carrier frequencies quickly and efficiently. So that is why we need some expensive and complex frequency synthesizer circuitries. So here are some of the applications of our frequency object spectrum system. That is they would have been used in WLAN standards 802.11b. They would also have been used in Bluetooth technology for data transfer, we would have been using this FHSS spread spectrum communication techniques. They would also have been used in single channel ground and airborne radio systems. And walkie talkies are another example of our FHSS system. These are the references. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.